Hi everyone, my name is Suborno Isaac Berry from Berry Science Labs, and today we're going to be talking about divergence, gradient, and curl. Yes, they all use the same symbol. So, uh, these are three very important concepts in vector calculus and calculus 3, and so that's why I'll be covering them today, because I have to learn them for general relativity. So, first of all, this is divergence. Now, the way you tell the difference between these three is, let's say you have some vector function f, then this will be the gradient, this is the divergence, and this, with the cross product symbol, is the curl. So first of all, let's talk about divergence. So basically, divergence is... Uh, we kind of informally define the NABLA symbol as partial, partial x, partial, partial y, partial, partial z. So, what does that mean? Well, that means we can liken this notation to a dot product whenever we have f, which, is, which has components fx, fy, fz, don't mistake this for, I think, Leibniz notation. Uh, these are not partial derivatives. They are simply the components of the vector function. So then, uh, once you dot these two together, it gives you partial fx over partial x plus partial fy over partial y plus partial fz over partial z. So this is the divergence. So why is this important? Well, basically, it can tell you what a source and what a sink is. So, essentially, let's say that you have a, a point in space from which fluid is coming out. And then you have another point on your surface towards which fluid is coming in. So in fluid mechanics, this is extremely important, even though I'm not studying fluid mechanics. Did you say it's positive and negative, like positive and negative charge? Yeah, sort of. So this has a positive divergence, and this has a negative divergence. So the path that the fluid takes will be like this with the vector fields more detailed throughout. So, that is why divergence is important. So then, let's talk about gradient. So gradient, I'm pretty sure, is the simplest of the three. It's actually itself a vector, and it just partial fx, partial x, comma, partial fy, partial y, comma, partial fz, over partial z. A common explanation I've heard for why this is important is basically it can tell you the direction in which the directional derivative is the largest, or in other words, uh, the fastest way to get down a surface or upward up a surface. Uh, I don't know about that analogy, but that's the best one I've heard. So finally, we can talk about curl. So curl has a very formalized definition. Once again, we can use this definition of NABLA in order to use the cross product notation to say that the curl is the determinant of the matrix I, J, K, and then you have the component of NABLA, which are partial, partial X, partial, partial Y, partial, partial Z, and then you have the components of F, FX, FY, FZ. So, uh, this is how the curl looks like, and if you actually bothered to take uh, the gradient, no, uh, the cross product or the determinant, you would find that it would be 
let's see, I f a uh, partial f z partial y minus partial f y partial z plus j times uh, let's see partial f x partial z minus partial f z partial x plus k times partial f let's see y partial x minus partial fx over partial y. Or, in other words, written in vector form, it would look like this. So that seems like an overly formalized definition without much geometric intuition. So what does this intuitively mean? Well, let's think about what we had earlier. So let's say we had a vector field like f is equal to x, uh, uh, xy. So at every point in space, it would just be pointing radially outward in greater and greater magnitude, just like so. So it would not be the most exciting system. Now for two dimensions, I think you can guess this gets reduced to the curl of f, the determinant of i, j, partial, partial, x, partial, partial, y, f, x, wait, no, wait a second. Oh, never mind. Yeah, this, I'm pretty sure it's most well defined in three dimensions. But in two dimensions, I'm decently sure it's partial fx over partial y minus partial fy over comma partial fy over partial x. There it is. So, uh, this is the curl in two dimensions, and that's the one that we'll ex be exploring right here. Now, this graph has zero curl. Which looks a little surprising at first, but, I mean, if you actually plug in partial fx, partial y, x is considered a constant, so its derivative with respect to y is zero. Partial fy over partial x, same story, this is zero as well. So, it gives you the zero vector, which means that the curl is non-existent. Uh, meanwhile, something like this... more circular, would have a non-zero curl. Uh, the way I like to think about it is, although I don't know how necessarily accurate this is with uh, the actual formal definition, if you have a vector field at some point in space a comma b that has the value c comma d, then the curl is kind of a measure of the average orthogonality between the vector a, b, and the vector c, d. So, like, if you just had this circular kind of thing, so right over here, then over here, you can notice that usually the position vector is perpendicular to the vector field at that point in space. So, that is exactly why curl is important. So, that's a brief talk about divergent, gradient, and curl. See you next time.